All right, I'm going to share my slides here. All right. So thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Um, we are going to be kicking off our Time to Restore project today. Um, this is a project that is funded by the South Central Climate Adaptation Science Center. Um, if you're not familiar with the CASTS, the goal of the CAST is to provide people that are decision makers and others information about um, climate change and how it's impacting plants and animals and the environment. And so our hope with this project is to provide some climate informed guidance to those working on pollinator restoration. So I wanted to first introduce our project team. Uh, we have a great group of collaborators from across the South Central region. So perhaps we can go from east to west and start with Louisiana. Are you here, Sue? Okay, let's go to Oklahoma first then. Jane, do you wanna get us started? Um, sure, I can, I can do that. Um, so I'm Jane Breckenridge. I am the director of the UT Butterfly Farm and also the Tribal Alliance for Pollinators. We work with tribes uh, primarily in Oklahoma, but throughout the country on restoring habitat, um, restoring native plant uh, grasslands to support pollinators, to support monarch butterflies, to support um, other threatened butterflies, and to support the restoration of plants important for cultural purposes. Um, the TAP has a native plant seed bank uh, with over 150 species in it uh, that are available for any tribe or tribal member that wants to restore their lands. Um, it's all sorted by ecosystem or ecoregion, Bailey's ecoregion. Uh, but that's available and uh, you can find out a little more about that if you go to our website, tribalallianceforpollinators.com. We also provide training and um, workshops for people interested in restoring native plants for tribes and tribal members, um, as well as having an equipment lending library to um, support and aid individuals and tribes in that effort. Um, we're based at the Uchi Butterfly Farm, which is located just outside Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we are on my uh, great-grandmother's original um, Muscogee allotment. Uh, she was also Yuchi, and hence our honor of her with our name. Um, we are excited to assist in this project, just as we're going out and trying to restore landscapes. Uh, it's always good. We have a lot of kind of boots in the ground uh, experience with trying to have a you know this issue of trying to have a better sense of what bloom times are um, as they change with climates and being able to coordinate that with when uh, pollinators or monarchs are present but we're looking forward to being part of a much larger effort to better document that and also make that information to, available to more people uh, through our own efforts we've seen uh, the changes are happening very rapidly and uh, a lot of asynchronous um, events out there. Uh, so we're excited to um, that Aaron asked us to be a part of this effort and to be able to assist it in any way. And also to uh, try and bring our, you know, our partners, our tribal partners that are working in these efforts with us um, into this larger effort to try and make this information that will help better support pollinators um, just more available to everybody who's because we're all in this together. So that's that's what we do. Okay. April, do you want to go next? Sure. Hey, everybody. I'm April Taylor. I'm a Chickasaw member and Chickasaw employee at the South Central Climate Adaptation Science Center that funded this project. Um, but I'm a tribal liaison for Oklahoma, Texas, and Louisiana for climate change. And we have a tribal engagement program that includes workforce development, uh, building tribal capacity and research partnerships. So thank you. Thanks. Shall we go to New Mexico next, Kim? 
Hi, I'm Kim Eichhorst. I am um, Science and Research Director for the Bosque Ecosystem Monitoring Program. And um, we actually um, involve students, um, K-12 students and adult volunteers in collecting citizen science or community science data um, that are hopefully used to make um, management decisions and um, monitoring phenology and working with some of the local pueblos is a big part of what we do. So being able to incorporate um, critical data and critical data collection and putting that data collection in the hands of um, community members is a big part of why we're excited to be on this team. Cynthia? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? I just gotta make sure. Yep. <laughs> Um, good morning, I'm Cynthia Naha. I am the New Mexico Tribal South Extension Center. So I work with April in the Tribal Engagement Program. So as she mentioned, you know, we do workforce development, tribal capacity building and research. So I'm still new to my role as I've been here three and a half months. So um, been an interesting undertaking thus far. And I know several of you know me, my former role as the director, former director of natural resources department for the Santa Domingo Pueblo. Um, so here happen as well as learning more about phenology. I have a good, uh, uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Cynthia. And Sue, are you on? Yeah. So in Louisiana, we have two people from the Gulf Coast Phenology Trail. This is a, a local network that is um, affiliated with our organization, the USA National Phenology Network. Um, and Gail and Sue have both been involved in uh, working with many different partners across the Gulf Coast from Louisiana to Alabama in helping them to collect information about plant and animal life cycle events there to understand climate change impacts um, and other changes happening along the Gulf Coast. Uh, so my name is Erin Postumus. I am the outreach coordinator for the USA National Phenology Network. Uh, we are a, a national network that um, is trying to collect, store, and share phenology data and information. Uh, if you haven't heard of phenology, it's just the timing of life cycle events of plants and animals. Um, I have a Western science background in wildlife conservation and management, and I have been with the USA NPN for over 10 years now. Um, my primary roles are as outreach coordinator. Um, I help to communicate information to all of our partners and people that are part of our data collection efforts. Um, and then I also work specifically with the Fish and Wildlife Service as well to help them to implement phenology monitoring across the National Wildlife Refuge System. Um, and on this project here, I'm the PI. Um, so I'll be coordinating a lot of the efforts um, through the different phases of the project, um, working with all the great collaborators here. And, uh, my name is Alyssa Rose Martin. I work with Erin at the National Phenology Network. And I am, in general, my job is about partnership, supporting indigenous partners, as well as the Park Service, Forest Service, to use phenology information in management, and um, as well as some data analysis, data visualization. So I'm supporting Erin um, in facilitating these workshops and the state level workshops that we'll talk about later. Um, and uh, yeah, just helping bring the partners together and helping um, shape some of the products that we ultimately develop. And, and happy to be here and excited about this work. Haley? Yeah, I'm Haley. I am currently a student at the University of Arizona, and I'm working with the USA National Phenology Network as an intern. My role in this project has mainly been looking at what citizen science or oh, volunteer science data is already available and trying to understand um, what we know about plant flowering and seeding timing in the South Central region. And I'm super, super excited to be here. All right. So I wanted to go over our plan for today. Um, before I do that, I just wanted to note that um, everyone is muted currently. Um, if you have any questions or comments, you're welcome to put that in the chat, or if you want to raise your hand, we can call on you and you can unmute or we can ask you to unmute as well. Um, you probably noticed we are recording this portion of the workshop 
we will stop the recording after the overview um, and we'll be sending the recording around in case you want to review it later and also to share with people who weren't able to be at the workshop today. Uh, we won't be recording the remainder of the workshop, um, but we will likely share around some slides and notes and things like that from the other um, portions. Um, so the plan for today is really to give you an overview of what we're hoping to achieve with this project in terms of our goals over the next two years um, and the deliverables that we're hoping to give you all by the end. Um, then we're going to transition into a panel discussion about best practices for working with tribes for successful partnerships. Uh, we'll have a, a number of our collaborators that will be sharing their personal experiences during the panel, and then we'll have time for some questions and answers as well um, that you might have. Then we're going to transition to learning about your needs. Um, so we want to hear from you about um, where the gaps are in the information you see, um, changes that you're noticing, um, and things like that. And then we will make a plan for the state workshops that we're going to host next month. Um, so talking about how um, we can do the communication around that going forward. Um, so I also welcome you, if you'd like to introduce yourself in the chat, feel free to put in any information you'd like to tell us, um, your name, affiliation, where you're from, um, your interest in the workshop, anything like that. So we can start to get to know each other. All right, so we have a number of people from different types of organizations and affiliations here with us. Um, there are many different people that have a role in pollinator restoration and conservation. So um, there are people in federal agencies and state agencies that are actively working to restore habitat for pollinators. Um, there's the Tribal Alliance for Pollinators that Jane mentioned, um, and then a lot of other non-governmental organizations, um, the Xerces Society and the Pollinator Partnership are organizations that you might know about that are developing a lot of great resources to help with pollinator conservation and restoration. So lots of really great stuff that's already out there. And we certainly want to be connecting to all of these existing resources um, throughout this project and building on what um, the great work that's already been done. Um, specifically at the workshop today, this is a breakdown of the people that have registered for the workshop. So we have a, a pretty good spread across the different states. Um, we don't have as many people from Louisiana, and we have a couple of people that plan to join us from some other states outside of the South Central region as well. And then in terms of affiliations, um, we have a lot of people from federal agencies, including the Fish and Wildlife Service, the Forest Service, the Park Service, um, and a couple others. We have some state affiliated folks. Um, a number of people from different tribes and pueblos across the region. Um, we have quite a few people from master gardeners and then a number of people from other organizations as well, such as universities and um, other groups. So uh, we, we definitely want to be building on the resources that are already out there. There are some resources for the South Central region, although they're generally pretty broad. Um, you'll see things like we call these planting palettes or planting guides where there's a, a general idea about flowering times for pollinators. So you might have a calendar like the one on the left that shows when um, different species are expected to bloom throughout the year. Um, other guides might include other information about plant traits. So things like the color of the plants that might be attractive to certain pollinators. Um, different uh, things about the flower structure, um, as well as the, the timing of the flowering or the fruiting. Um, so there is some information out there, but often this, um, these kind of resources don't include information about how climate change will impact the blooming and flowering or the flowering and the fruiting timing for these different plants. Um, they're also often pretty broad in um, their scale. So it'll be a regional guide rather than something that's maybe more specific and useful at a particular site level. So the gaps that we see in the information that exists are really the um, information that can help you guide when to, or which plants to select um, and also when to harvest seeds. Um, there's also seems to be gaps in people not being connected to each other across the region. So we've had a lot of feedback that people want to know who else is working on restoration in the region to help connect with others and leverage each other's resources and work together. Also that customized relevant information that you know the 
the information that's out there might be too broad um, in the scale. And then also that climate informed guidance. So knowing about um, how things are gonna be changing with climate change, um, is that gonna shift flowering time, shift um, the timing of when seeds are ripe and ready for harvest? Um, and what, what is that gonna look like under a, a different climate that might be more variable than um, it has been in the past? Um, and there are likely many other gaps as well. So we're really looking forward to hearing from you all about um, where you see gaps in information and the needs that you have for doing pollinator restoration work. So here are some questions that we are hoping to address during the project over the next couple of years. Um, so we want you to be able to understand who else is working on pollinator restoration in your state or in the region. Um, what are the resources that are out there currently um, and make sure that you're connected to the right things. Uh, knowing about how you select plants with particular bloom times, maybe you want to have a bloom time across different seasons to cover the spring all the way through to the fall to cover multiple periods of pollinator activity. Knowing when to harvest seeds and how that might be different from one site to the next, even within states. Um, and then also how will the bloom and seed periods shift with climate change. Um, and feel free to post other questions that you already are thinking about in the chat. So the approach that we're taking with this project is what's called a co-production approach, which just means that we wanna work with you to develop the information and the guidance. So we don't wanna just make it on our end, um, thinking about what we think is the most appropriate for you. We really wanna be in communication with you all as the people who will use the information to make sure that it is uh, what you want to see and what will be the most useful for you. So this is a, a diagram that, um, has evolved over time. This version um, appeared in the Dominique David Chavez and Gavin paper in 2018. And this builds on this kind of um, gradient of levels of community participation um, and goes from contractual where that would be, you know, as the scientists, we create a product and then give it to people and hope that it's useful all the way to a more collegial approach where we're working directly with the people who are going to use the information to make sure that it is most useful um, and that the people that we're working with have authority in what the product looks like. So we also want to consider um, this indigenous approach that um, David Chavez and Gavin added onto this diagram because it's really important to us as we're working with our tribal partners across the region that we're really coming at this in a way that is respectful and um, takes into account many different concerns about um, land use and data sovereignty and really gives our indigenous partners um, authority over the research process. So we are hoping that our efforts here will be on the right side of this, this gradient, uh, ranging from the collaborative to the indigenous um, as we work with different partners in the region. So our timeline for the project is we are starting with our workshops here. So this is our kickoff workshop. And we will also be having multiple state workshops next month in November. Um, and the purpose of these workshops is really to um, start to get feedback from you all as the people who will um, be the ones who will benefit from this project. Uh, to understand what are the gaps that are out there, um, help you connect with other people across the region, um, develop some shared best practices for collaborating with tribes, and then also to start to determine some priority species and locations um, that you would like us to focus on going forward. And that will be, um, that last bullet will be primarily in the state workshops when we really get into talking about specifics in the different states about um, what the interests are, what are the priority species that you care about. Then we hope to do some data collection. So there's many different ways to collect information about flowering and seeding of plants. Um, we have some ways that we are already familiar with at the USA National Phenology Network. We have a data collection program, um, but we're interested in hearing about um, the different forms that we might collect information outside of those formats. Um, and so we're hoping to start on that next year and then continue that um, over the next two years and collecting more information um, than what's already out there. And then in 2023, towards the end of the project, uh, we will be 
starting to analyze the data um, that we have um, collected and the information that we've generated and create some guidance on nectar plant phenology, trying to um, give more information about the variation in different species that are important to you, as well as how um, the changing climate might impact the timing that's um, happening for those species. And then deliver that information in a format that is the one that you would like to see. So we're interested in getting feedback on that as well. We have some ideas about how we can present the information, but we're hoping to have that be a, a conversation where you can tell us what will be the most useful to you to have that information delivered. And then we wanna make sure that the products that we're making any information is useful. So we hope that we'll have follow-up surveys following the project to ensure that the information is most useful. So that is it for our overview. Um, I don't know if there are any questions in the, the chat to address right now, but um, we're next going to move to our panel discussion about working with tribes for successful partnerships. Aaron, should I 